Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an episode called Hi So from a Thai mystery thriller anthology series, Girl From Nowhere. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In the opening scene, we are introduced to a prestigious high school in Thailand. An affiliate of the school is giving a tour to a new student named Nano. She shows her every classroom and tells Nano the name of the parents who donated for the rooms to be well equipped. It is clear that the school runs on donations from the parents. The rich students are respected while the poor ones are made fun of. Nano asks if she is allowed to pay for one of the rooms in the school. The woman takes her words into consideration and gives her an old classroom in return for money. Nano then changes the classroom into her personal office. Somewhere else, the son of a millionaire businessman, Dino, brings bags full of gifts from the UK for his friends. He had gone to visit his parents who live there. Alongside Dino, Toe was also in the UK for a trip. His friends had placed a bet on who would bring them more gifts, and Dino wins. The friends unknowingly compete against each other in terms of wealth. Dino is the unsaid leader of the group, and the wealthiest one among them. Toe asks him why he didn't meet him when they were in the same city, to which Dino replies that he wanted to spend time with his family. Toe is infuriated that his friends like Dino better than him, and is ashamed that he is not as wealthy. It is evident that the group loves Dino just for his money. He is aware of this fact, but doesn't seem to mind them using him. The group finds out that a new student bought an entire classroom for herself on her first day at school. Dino finally has a competitor, which he is not happy about. As they talk about Nano, she enters the classroom and affirms that she did in fact buy a room in the school. According to her, she is opening her own company that will help the students get anything they want in turn for money. She hands them all her business cards, claiming that her company's motto is that money can buy everything. Following that, the teacher walks in and hands them all the results of the last test. Dino, as usual, gets the best grades out of them. Meanwhile, Pop is mad because he scored only a 2.24 GPA when he had to cross 3.0 to get a new motorbike from his father. He complains about life being unfair when Nano offers to help him through her company. She brings them to her office and asks Pop for 15,000 baht for the service. Since it is pretty cheap compared to the motorcycle he wants, he decides to give her the money. Moreover, the group wants to test if she is telling the truth. After confirming that the money is paid in full, Nano asks for his test result and shreds it using a paper shredder. The group is shocked, but then Nano prints out a brand new paper with a better score. It looks identical to the others, so Pop's parents wouldn't notice that it's fake. He thanks her, happy with the results. Nano claims that she can do many other things for them. When asked what kind of things, she smiles and says anything. Starting that day, her business flourishes quickly. A crowd of students lines up in front of her office with money, asking her for several favors. One day, a guy asks Nano to teach his ex-girlfriend a lesson for cheating on him. That evening, her new boyfriend is beaten to death by some thugs. Similarly, another guy asks for a girlfriend and gets one, thanks to her company. One day, after class, Nano questions Dino why he hadn't asked her for her services until now. She thinks it is strange that he has no problems in his life. The others claim that he is filthy rich, his parents are never home, and his grades are good. Since his life is basically perfect, he doesn't need her help. Pop even claims that if Nano has a problem, she must come to Dino because he has a solution to everything. Then, a girl named Juan mentions that she needs Nano's help to create a fake teacher's letter to her parents. She wants to go on an overnight trip outside Thailand, but doesn't want her parents to know. The guys like the idea and join in on it. Soon, they start to plan a trip to Japan. When they ask Dino to join, he claims that he is tired of taking so many trips abroad and just wants to be home for now. The others try to convince him to join them, but he doesn't budge. Nano knows something about him is off. To find out, she suggests they go to Dino's house for dinner. Since it is a massive villa that has a swimming pool, a home theater, a snooker room, a golf room, and many other facilities, the group is sure to enjoy the stay much more than if they travel abroad. However, Dino doesn't want them in his house, afraid that they will get drunk and break expensive things in it. Pop promises to take responsibility for all the damages and urges him to invite them for only a night. When he still doesn't agree, they get irritated and ask him if he considers them his friends. Dino doesn't want them to be upset and agrees to let them stay for a single night. 
After school ends, he gets inside his car and tells the driver the address to his house. When he reaches there, it is revealed that Dino's parents are small business owners who work hard to send him to a prestigious school. When he first came into the school, he saw how only the rich kids had friends and lied to them about being wealthy. With time, he had to keep up with the lie by renting cars to the school and buying them food from his fake foreign trips. This is the reason why he didn't meet Toe during his last trip to the UK. Similarly, he didn't want to invite his friends to his extravagant villa because he doesn't have one. Dino's parents are normal people who want nothing but his happiness. They are unaware of their son's shenanigans and think that his generous friends drop him off at home in their fancy cars every day. They never let Dino help them in household work, saying that he should focus on his studies instead. That day, Dino is tense because if he doesn't bring his friends to a massive villa the next day, they will know that he has been lying to them for several years. After coming this far with his lies, he cannot step back. He gets a text from Nano in the group chat asking him what time they should come to his house. Dino is thinking of a way to avoid the topic, but his friends start to talk about what they're going to wear to the dinner. As the conversation proceeds, he cannot say no to them. His only way is to ask Nano for help. He calls her and tells her that he wants a house for the next day. When asked why he cannot take them to his original house, he still insists that he doesn't want them to break the expensive decorations. Nano promises to keep it a secret and agrees to help him with his problem. However, she charges 200,000 baht for the fake mansion. Dino doesn't have that much money to waste for a single night, but he hopes to manage it. When his parents are distracted packing boxes for their business, he steals his father's purse. As he is about to take the card out, he overhears his parents talking about loan sharks who have been bothering them every day. If they do not pay them 200,000 baht by the next week, they have threatened to kill them. The couple is relieved because they have earned enough this month to pay off the loans. Dino puts the card back after listening to their conversation. But then, a vision of his friends calling him a liar and a cheat makes him take it out again. Better to let his parents get murdered than for his fake friends to find out that he's lying. When his parents fall asleep, he sneaks out of the house and withdraws money from the ATM. On returning home, he encounters his father and is almost caught. The next morning, Dino wakes up to his parents on a phone call with the bank, complaining about the theft. When the phone operator suggests someone from the family must have taken it out, Dino's father refuses to believe it. Dino simply walks out of the house and meets Nano in front of his mansion for the day. When asked if he likes it, he comments that it is a bit smaller than his house. Later, the entire group arrives at the house for dinner. Dino proudly sits on the sofa, pretending like the expensive cigar and the in-house golf course is normal to him. Then, Nano suggests they drink whiskey. She is set on calling the maids to serve them, almost as if she has planned something. When the housemaids arrive in the lobby, Dino is shocked to see that it is his parents. They have taken the job to earn more money to pay off the loan. They recognize their son, but do not call him out in front of his friends. Dino can hardly say anything when Nano suggests they look at his parents' pictures on the internet. On finding them, she also comments that he resembles the house servants more than he resembles his parents. Dino's mother helps him, claiming that he looks like his grandfather. Following that, they go to the dining room and are served a full-course restaurant-style meal. When they drink the whiskey, they realize that it is actually fruit juice. Pop lashes out at Dino's father, calling him an idiot. The man apologizes and says that they shouldn't be drinking at their age. This makes Pop even more furious. He emphasizes that Dino's father is just a servant, asking him to act like one. After being insulted, the man simply serves them the drink. To stir the awkwardness, Nano suggests they smoke weed as well. Dino tries to stop them, saying that his parents might find out, but the group doesn't listen. To fit in, he also smokes while his parents watch him in disappointment. Moments later, Pop asks for wine, but Dino's father refuses to serve it since they have already had too much to drink. Pop threatens to get him fired and insults him yet again. Scared of him, Dino's mother serves them the wine, even when the father disagrees. She accidentally drops it on Juan, who accuses her of doing it on purpose. Pop gets up from his seat, ready to fight them, but Dino stops him. He calms everyone down and asks his friends to go to another room. For a minute, he is left alone with his parents, but he walks away when his mother tries to talk to him. Following that, the group goes to a study room while complaining about the rude servants. They want to do something fun to lighten the mood when Nano shows them a revolver she found on a shelf. 
Pop loads a single bullet and bets 200,000 baht on the person who gets shot. The group joins in and bets 200,000 baht each. The person to get shot in the arm will receive more than 1 million baht, so Dino doesn't want to give up the chance. Pop goes first, but isn't shot. Similarly, three of them press the trigger with the gun to their arm, but they do not get shot either. When it is Nano's turn, she points the gun at her head, but she is not shot either. At last, it is Dino's turn. He is about to shoot himself when his father stops him. He yells at the kids to be more responsible with their lives because their parents love them. An enraged Pop hits him with a golf club and knocks him out. Before the group can react, Dino's mother interferes and begins to scold them. Pop hits her with the back of the revolver and knocks her out as well. Dino freezes in shock, but he still doesn't do anything to help his parents. Nano starts to laugh maniacally, while the others look at the maids in horror. In the following scene, Dino walks to his house to see that his parents are having dinner. Their faces are covered in injuries that were inflicted by Pop. They do not talk about the events of the day and call him to have dinner. A flashback shows us that as they came back to consciousness, they were given 3,500,000 baht to keep their mouths shut. In the last scene, we see the family having dinner peacefully. The camera pans towards the bag of money they received earlier. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.